Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to take a couple minutes and talk about valve springs. So aside from a handful of engines, chances are your engine has valve springs. The good all-round serviceman is really four mechanics in one. Around the turn of the century, there were some engines that were developed without valve springs. Mercedes built a few and currently the Cotti, you have a motorcycle, your engine does not have valve springs. They use a rock arm to open and to close the valve. But for the most part, there's valve springs. There's three different types of valve springs we're gonna talk about today. There's a single, a dual, and a beehive. Each different style of valve spring has its place in the market. Um, a single would be basically if you're upgrading from stock and you need a little bit more seat and open pressure, you'd go up to a single spring. Um, the beehive has its own special design and as the spring compresses on itself, it kind of dampens and uh, cre creates a situation where it cancels its own harmonics. And a dual valve spring uses two valve springs that are working together to create less harmonics. Now harmonics are basically what's going to drive your valve train into a frenzy, into valve float. Uh, we're gonna post a clip here of an engine on a Spintron. The Spintron is a machine that um, basically you run the valve train on its own using a high speed camera and you can watch the stability of the valve train. Upgrading valve springs is also essential in avoiding valve float. Valve float is basically when the valve train is no longer in control and there's a host of parts that will break because of valve float. The single valve spring and the dual valve spring both use a similar size retainer, while the Beehive, because of its tapered design, allows a smaller retainer for a little bit less mass. If you're dealing with an overhead cam engine, you already have a lot less mass in the valve train to deal with than an overhead valve engine, so you're already at a huge advantage. This advantage is easily shown in the dual overhead or single overhead cam engine's ability for high RPM stability. Now when the question comes up of why you need an upgraded spring, it's pretty simple. The factory springs were designed for a certain lobe speed and a certain engine speed, and most of them were designed to not have boost on the back of the valve. When, the, when there's boost pressure present on the back of the valve face, it's actually pushing on that, which uh, directly decreases the amount of valve spring available. So if you've increased boost or engine speed, you're gonna look into getting an aftermarket valve spring set. In closing, there's a couple things that you should be aware of. Um, while changing the valve springs, you're gonna have to keep track of these little guys. These are the keepers. They will fly in a far, far away place that you'll never find them if you're not careful. So while you have the engine open, I recommend you take uh, paper towels and pack any small holes oil drain back holes that may be leading back to the pan because these things will fall into the pan. Um, I recommend that you get some grease on your fingertips and you can kind of stick the valve keeper to your finger while you uh, pull it off and put it on. That way it's not just getting sprung loose into the engine. These little things do fly, so pay attention while you're doing this. It's also worth noting that you'll want to have a set of fresh valve stem seals available. Chances are when you pull the valve spring off, you're going to change its locator or cup. And in order to change the locator or the cup, the, the, the seat that the spring sits in, you're gonna to need to pull that seal off and you will damage the seal while taking it off. Thanks for tuning in. You can subscribe below or you can follow us on Facebook.